It's finally here, the moment you have all been waiting for. Another video about boats, islands, and water, but the kind of water you can drink. That's right, it's the second installment of our DIY water maker videos. A lot of you have been asking for the second video and it took us a bit of time, mainly because we wanted to make sure our installation was correct and that we had good data to give you accurate information about the installation. In our first video, we went through how to make water on a sailboat with a water maker. We went through how a water maker works, the different parts required for a water maker, and we even looked at some of the pros and cons of buying an off-the-shelf system versus a DIY system. If you're new to water makers, I suggest you click the link above and check out our first video because it will make this video a little bit more clear. In this video, we're going to go through how to install a DIY water maker from scratch. That is, sourcing all the parts and assembling it like a piece of IKEA furniture. We will start by discussing all the things you need to think about when going down the DIY path for a water maker, such as powering your water maker or choosing different pumps and membrane sizes. We'll also discuss sourcing parts. Then we will map out where all the components in the system will go and some of the tools that are useful in making the installation successful. Finally, we'll go through some of the mistakes I made along the way in an effort so you don't make those same mistakes in your own installation. When installing a water maker, we have two limitations. The first being the size and space we have available on our boat to install a water maker. And the second is the power or the power source available to power a water maker. With the power source, we essentially have three options. The first option is to run your water maker on AC with an AC high pressure pump. The energy source needs to be pretty significant. So you either have a really large battery bank and a large inverter, or you need to have a power source such as a generator. Running your water maker on AC means you can start a larger high pressure pump. Therefore, you can have more reverse osmosis membranes and you can produce more water. The downside is all of those extra membranes can add more space to the installation. On Polar Seal, we decided to keep things simple and that's why we went with option two. So option two is running your water maker on a DC system. DC high pressure pumps and motors are simple and can be easily integrated into a boat's electrical system but they do require a lot of amps when working, so you need to make sure your electrical system can support it. This type of system is also good for boats that do not have a generator or access to an AC power source. Onboard Polar Seal, our high pressure pump runs at about 2.1 gallons a minute and draws 55 amps. We have 1,000 watts of solar on the deck and 680 amp hours of lithium battery, so we do feel our system can support it. By the way, if this whole AC-DC thing confuses you, Click the link above for a video on basic boat electrics. The last option is to power your water maker using the engine. You'll need to find space in the engine compartment and it's a bit of a complex project, so we're going to remove it from the video today and only focus on AC and DC water makers. But if you are interested in this, please let us know and maybe in the future we'll make a DIY water maker video using the engine. Once you know how you're going to power your system, you can start picking the size of reverse osmosis membrane you're going to use. Generally speaking, system output is related to two things. The first being the size of the high pressure pump and the second being the size and the amount of reverse osmosis membranes. Here is our guesstimate on what you can expect to see based on the size and the amount of reverse osmosis membranes. So for a 20 inch membrane, maybe between eight to 10 gallons per hour. For a 40 inch membrane, anywhere between 16 to 17 gallons per hour. And for two 40 inch membranes, between 32 to 35 gallons per hour. These are approximations, but it will give you a ballpark. On board Polar Seal, we choose a single 40 inch membrane, primarily because of space. It requires 800 PSI to operate and produces between 16 and 17 gallons per hour or 60 to 65 liters an hour. If we were to add a second membrane, and we might someday, we would almost double our freshwater production. However, this would require a bit bigger pump to make the 800 PSI required for reverse osmosis membranes. That might require us to change power source. But that's one of the beauties of a DIY system. We can make upgrades and changes as we go along fairly simply without requiring to change the whole system. On board Polar Seal, these are the parts that we use to assemble our DIY water maker. Two through hauls, the first to allow seawater into the boat and the second to allow the brine discharge out of the boat. The seawater then goes into a seawater strainer, followed by the low pressure pump, which then feeds the water into our 20 micron filter 
followed by our five micron filter. After that, we have a small pressure gauge so I can monitor what's going on in the low pressure side. The water then flows into our high pressure pump, which is powered by our high pressure motor. And that then flows into our high pressure hose. So you need to have a hose that's capable of handling the pressure that the pump is putting out. It then flows into the pressure vessel, which is housing our reverse osmosis membrane. After that, there's going to be a small control valve and a monitor. From there, water goes two ways. It's either brine discharge that goes overboard or fresh water. And this blue line is our fresh water, our product. And that's gonna go up here to our flow meter and then down into this three-way valve. And here we can select if the water either goes to the sink or to the tanks. We also have our TDS monitor to the see. TDS monitor? It's a TDS, not a TSD. And we test the water through this really cool device called a TSD monitor. I made that mistake, and I think every single person who watched our video corrected me on it. Thank you. The last piece of kit you're gonna need is some type of switch to turn on the low pressure pump and the high pressure pump. And obviously, to connect all these parts, you're gonna need connectors and hoses, preferably of food grade quality. On board Polar Seal, we have a freshwater flush system which allows us to preserve our system and keep it healthy when we're away from the boat. That includes a carbon filter which is then followed by a small control box which allows us to set the frequency and time that we run the freshwater flush system. Now the nice thing about a DIY system is that you can make it as complex or as simple as you want. So you don't necessarily have to follow the way we did it. Before you start buying parts, it's a good idea to map out where all the parts might go. And here are a few tips when thinking about that. First, place your water maker in an area that's easily accessible. You're going to be running your water maker a lot and you want to make sure you have access to all the filters and valves. Second, remember that the DIY system is modular so you can place parts wherever you have space. On board Polar Seal, I chose to put the water maker inside of our garage and build most of it on a panel that goes on the wall and place the high pressure pump in the membrane on the side of the wall. Estimate the amount of connections and hoses that you need and buy yourself a few extra. Those parts are generally cheap and it will save you a trip to the hardware store when something breaks and it will, cause that happened to me. Mapping out your system ahead of time will give yourself an idea of how the installation will go. But let's be honest, this is a boat project and we all know things will sneak up from time to time. So knowing this ahead of time will save you a little frustration when they do sneak up. So now we have a good idea of how your DIY water maker is going to look. It's time to go shopping. Sourcing parts for a DIY water maker is probably the most time consuming part, but we have some tips to make the process more efficient. The first option is to go online and buy every part one by one. Almost all the parts that we showed in our first water maker video can be bought at a local hardware store or online. One of the benefits of this is that you get every part exactly how you want it and at the very best price. But one of the downsides is, is that it's very time consuming and you may have problems finding the correct high pressure pump and motor. You will also have none, zero, nil, technical support if you have questions. When sourcing parts yourself, you need to be careful of a few things. The first being that the high pressure pump is appropriately rated for the reverse osmosis membrane that you're going to use. Essentially, you need to make sure that the pump is providing an adequate amount of pressure to your RO membrane, so not too much or not too little. The second thing to be mindful of is to ensure the thread type of all your components are compatible. The thread type is the little spiral things that we see on different bolts and nuts that we use. I didn't know this when starting the project, but there's like 10 different types of thread standards in the world. There's US standards, EU standards, UK standards, and most of them are not compatible. We are all sailors, so we move around the world and thus we'll find different thread standards as we go along. What I did was used a lot of plumber's tape and kind of forced the parts into each other. But if you're doing the project, it might be better to use the same standard with all your different components. A lot of you have asked for a list of parts and where to buy them. I don't have such a list, but they do exist online and with a little Googling, you can find them. The second option is to work with a company that sources the parts for you. And that's what we did aboard Polar Seal. We worked with a Florida based company called Seawater Pro who takes all of the legwork out of sourcing parts. We found that Seawater Pro had a number of different kits with different options and at different prices. If you want an inexpensive water maker, but don't wanna go through all the trouble of assembling it yourself, 
which would be weird because why else are you watching this video? Seawater Pro also sells fully assembled kits. It's maybe a little bit more expensive than us sourcing the parts ourselves, but it saved us a lot of time with sourcing, and we also got great customer service from Mike, who helped us troubleshoot a few problems along the way. So a big shout out to Mike at Seawater Pro. He was really great to work with. So you got all of your parts, and now you're really excited to install your water maker. But before you do, I'm gonna show you some of the tools I found most useful when installing our water maker aboard Polar Seal. First, an adjustable wrench and an adjustable plumber's wrench having two is really helpful some pliers a good knife this one's not so good but i used it a lot drill some zip ties i used lots of zip ties to kind of hold things in place a screwdriver set and lots and lots and lots of plumber's tape so it's not an exhaustive list but these are the tools i use probably 90 percent of the time when we did the installation when it comes time to testing your system, you're gonna need a few more tools. And that's because I took a few showers and I'm sure you will too. The first, lots and lots, whoop, and lots of towels. And if you don't have enough, the second tool I would suggest, a wet dry vac in order to vacuum up all the water that's going to get into your bilge. So now that you have all of your parts, you know where they're gonna go and you have the tools available, it's now time to Ikea your water maker. And for this, I divide it into three phases. The first phase being test fitting, the second phase being actual connection and assembly, and the third is testing. I would say I spent about two weeks putting together the entire water maker, and 40% of the time was spent test fitting the parts, 20% was spent actually assembling, and then 40% was spent finding leaks and repairing those leaks. Phase one, test fit. I thought I knew where everything was going to go, but when you actually get the parts, things are normally not exactly how you visioned. So I spent a lot of time holding up different parts and where I thought they would go and making sure that they would fit. I didn't want to drill a lot of holes into the wood of Polar Seal, so I assembled the majority of the water maker on one single piece of plywood and then drilled that plywood onto Polar Seal, which gave me a little bit extra margin of error. In the end, it's all about location. The rest is just running pipes and wires, ensuring the connections are tight and leak-proof. Phase two, putting the parts together. This is the phase where we're gonna connect all those parts we just test fitted. And let's face it, this is probably the easiest part of the process, so enjoy it, because in phase three, things are gonna get a little more wild. Step three, test the system. This is when your water maker installation becomes a full-on boat project. It's likely the longest and hardest part. One of the reasons it's a bit long is because we really shouldn't run our water maker inside a marina. The water is full of oils and a lot of other undesirable things. So we need to have good weather to take our boat out and test it. What we can do in the marina is run the fresh water flush of the system. This will take fresh water from our tanks and run it through a majority of the system, which will allow us to test maybe 90% of the joints and the connections that are there. After we test the fresh water flush, we can then take the boat out and test it under high pressure to see how the joints are holding up. One thing to be aware of though, is that when running your water maker under high pressure for the first time, you should not have the product water flow into your tanks for probably the first hour. This is because the manufacturer of the membrane puts chemicals in the membrane to preserve it. We don't want that flowing into our freshwater tanks. So either select your three-way valve to discharge the product water into the sink or disconnect the freshwater hose to your tanks and let it flow overboard. No matter how well you've put together your system, it will leak. When you find the leaks, you get to fix them. All right, so now that we've installed the toy, let's play with it. Before we turn it on, it's really important to make sure the seacock is open so we're actually sucking in water and not air. So what I typically do is I turn the TDS on, I turn the low pressure pump on, it starts filling up with water, and then I turn the high pressure pump on. Okay. Then we slowly start increasing the pressure here. You can see the pressure needle coming up. Okay. Now 
So to shut the system down, what I typically do is reverse the process. So take the three way valve, put it back into the sink mode, come over here, slowly relieve the pressure. You'll see there's no flow now. Shut the high pressure pump off and then the low pressure pump. Finally, we just freshwater flush. So I just take this, this dial, turn it to about three minutes. You hear it running. And now it's pushing fresh water through the system. So that's it. That's how we installed our water maker. Today, Sophie and I are enjoying water from the sea. We have not been to a marina in 40 days and it's primarily due to our water maker. We run it anywhere between one to two hours every other day, which produces 60 liters to 120 liters and is sufficient for our needs. When we run the water maker, we typically run it at the peak of sun day. So that's between maybe 11 and three. This allows us to only draw about 25 amps from our batteries when it's running. Otherwise we run between 50 and 60 amps. The last thing I'd like to do with our system is create a panel inside the boat where we can actually operate it. Today we have to go inside the garage to operate the water maker and to monitor it. And in the future, I would like to create a panel in our galley so that we can run everything from inside the boat. To be honest, I think I did a good job of spending the time required to map out the system and figure out where all the parts are gonna go. But with that said, there are a few mistakes I made that I'm gonna pass along to you in hopes that you don't make those same mistakes. The first is leaks are going to happen and you shouldn't let them get the best of you. I took a number of showers, some of which were pretty comical and I wish I would have laughed at them in the situation instead of wallowing in them. We have them on film, but we've removed all the foul language that took place because I don't want to show that. Uh, but it's just going to leak. It's just going to happen. Have some fun with it. The second thing is do not tighten any connections under pressure under any circumstances. It will not end well. Don't be afraid to ask for outside views or opinions with your installation. People have a lot of ideas that maybe you didn't even think of that could help with either where a part goes or how it's connected. So that's it guys, that's how you can assemble a DIY water maker. If you have questions or comments, or if you think I got something wrong, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below, or you can reach out to us directly. After our last video, we had a lot of questions and we do plan on doing a special Q&A on water maker really soon. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and if you haven't, subscribe. Also, if you enjoy these technical videos, consider joining us on Patreon. Doing so allows us to spend a little less time freelancing and a little bit more time bringing our knowledge to you. So that's it guys, thanks again for watching. Bye bye. Hey Ryan, I have a question. Bye bye. Is it a TSD or a TDS? What else did I mess up last time? No, I, I messed up the, the oh, greater yeah. than. And... Yeah, Sophie, which way does greater than or less than go? Uh... Lights on you. Goodbye!